Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I will be guiding you through today's experiment. Today's experiment is entitled Identification of Elements. It is a three-part lab. It's actually one of the more fun labs we do. We get to, to do a flame test, which everyone, every semester seems to really enjoy. Part one, we'll be identifying the elements based on physical properties. So what we're going to have, and I'll show you later on in today's video, is we're going to have boxes of elements set out around the lab. What we want you to do is look at them, examine them, and write down some of the physical properties that you can observe just by looking at a purified element. Part two, we'll be identifying an element based on molar mass. We have some baggies of metals with the amount of moles of the metal written on it. All you have to do is weigh it, or take the mass of it on a scale, divide the grams by the moles, and you have molar mass and you can identify the, what metal it is simply by knowing its molar mass. Part three is the identification of elements based on emission of light, otherwise known as the flame test. Uh, we'll literally be burning solutions of metals in a flame and seeing the effects the metals have on the flame itself. I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil the fun, but that is one of the more fun things we do this semester. It really is a, a student-pleasing experiment. Uh, with that, please come prepared, please bring proper shoes, proper clothes, and make sure you have your safety goggles, you will need them when you get here. Part one of today's experiment requires us to examine a series of elements, identify them by name, whether they are metal, non-metal, or metalloid, and to give a physical description of the element. Now let's take a closer look at one of these boxes. We'll pick carbon, because carbon is my favorite element. Here's the element carbon. This is how carbon, uh, is how the element carbon appears. It's what it looks like, it's its physical appearance. This is the symbol for carbon. Here we have two ways carbon naturally occurs in our environment. And down here are two ways we use carbon industrially. So in your notebook, you'd want to write down this is carbon. It's a non-metal and for a physical description, I would say it appears to be black solid would be a good description of carbon. When you're done with the element box, please place it back in the tray from which you found it. Part two of today's experiment requires us to determine the molecular mass of some unknown metals. Here we have an assortment of metals for you to choose from. Please pick two of them, write down the unknown number and the number of moles contained in the sample. The number of moles is written clearly on the bag or on the piece of metal. Remove the metal from the bag, place it on the scale to get the number of grams. Now you have the grams and you'll have the moles. Simply divide the number of grams by the number of moles and you have molar mass. For part three of this experiment, you are required to get some reagents to burn in the flame. To do this, you need a spot plate. This right here is a spot plate. I have clearly labeled each well of the spot plate with the reagent I'm going to put into the well. Notice that each reagent is different. This one's sodium chloride, this one's potassium chloride. Here we have strontium chloride and copper chloride. Make sure the reagent that's labeled on the bottle is where you drop it on your spot plate. To do that, simply take the dropper, unscrew it, get a little bit of liquid in the dropper. This is calcium chloride, so I'm going to put it in the calcium chloride well. One or, you know, three or four drops is all you need. You don't need very much. Replace the cover, screw it back down, and put the reagent bottle back where you found it. Now let's repeat that for strontium chloride. Just four or five drops, about like that, that's fine. Potassium chloride. Now I, I'm doing this with one hand, you may, you may have to use two, don't be shy, go ahead and use two. One, two, three, four, five. And finally, sodium chloride. Make sure you label the wells of your spa plate so that when you go to do the flame test, you don't have any problems and there's no guessing as to which reagent you're burning.
Now, we've got our reagents that we, we know into the proper wells, and now we're going to place the unknowns into the wells. The unknowns are clearly labeled unknown 1 and 2. Unknown 1 would go here, unknown 2 would go here, of course. Let's load that up. Probably the smart thing to do is to load your spot plate before doing the flame test. Don't turn your Bunsen burner on and come over here and get reagents. Wait until you have all your reagents ready to go and then turn on your Bunsen burner. So this is a fully loaded spot plate ready for the flame test. Part 3 of today's experiment requires the use of a Bunsen burner. Allow me to show you the proper and safest way to light a Bunsen burner. Imagine we walk up to this burner and we don't know the last person who used it. The first thing we want to do is make this burner as safe as we possibly can. And the safest way you can make a burner is completely turned off. So on the bottom of the Bunsen burner, you'll notice there's a small circular wheel. Simply take that wheel and turn it all the way clockwise or to the right until you feel it get snug. Once it gets snug, stop turning it. It's, that valve is completely closed. This is known as the needle valve of the Bunsen burner, and having it turned all the way to the right, snug, not tight, snug, don't over tighten. That's completely off. No gas can get to the combustion chamber. Now, the second thing I want you to do is take the barrel of the burner and turn it all the way clockwise as well, or to the right, until it stops. Now, don't tighten it, because you're going to have to loosen it again eventually. But now, what I've done is I've taken all the air away from the Bunsen burner as well. So this burner right now, no gas can get to, into the chamber, no air can get to the combustion chamber. This Bunsen burner will not light. That's as safe as we can make it. Now, of course we want to use the Bunsen burner, so we do want it to light. So simply take your fingers and the wheel, the needle valve, turn it two half turns to the left. Now the needle is on. But now we've controlled the amount of gas going to the burner. Do the same thing for the barrel. Two turns to the left. Now we're allowing some air to get to the burner. But now this flame is going to be controllable. I know pretty much how high the flame is going to be. I know it's not going to be all the way to the ceiling, and I know it's not going to be very small. I also know, because there's not a lot of air getting into the barrel, I also know that this flame will more than likely be yellow and easy to see. Next, you have to have a source of gas. These valves on the professor's bench are gas valves. You have them on your bench as well. They are blue capped. Any blue cap inside of a lab in the United States is gas. Simply take the hose of your Bunsen burner, push it into the, on, excuse me, onto the gas valve like so, and now your burner is ready to light. Before you light the burner, clean up all flammable things. I'm going to get rid of this book, get it over here out of the way. I'm going to take this tray, I'm going to move it out of the way. Get all flammable things away. Now, this is a striker. It makes sparks. Make sure that your uh, striker makes sparks and that you can make sparks easily. Take the gas valve, turn it all the way parallel to the hose, strike the striker over the Bunsen burner, and the Bunsen burner will light. Now, to make the flame more yellow, simply close or turn to the left the barrel. You can see there's a little more yellow in the flame. I'm not, not sure you can see it on the video, but there's a lot more yellow in the flame. To make the flame hotter, turn the barrel to the left, thus introducing more oxygen to the flame and making the flame hotter. If you want the flame to be lower, simply take the needle valve and turn it to the left. And the flame gets lower. If you need the flame higher, turn the needle valve to the right. When you're done with your Bunsen burner for the day, you turn the flame off from the source gas, from the valve. You never turn it off from the needle. Always turn it off from the valve. To do that, turn the valve perpendicular to the hose and the flame extinguishes. This is now hot. Don't touch it for at least 15 to 20 minutes. When you're done, you want to store the Bunsen burner, simply pull the hose off of the valve. It might take a little effort. There we go. And that Bunsen burner is safe to put away 
but make sure it's been at least 15 minutes to allow for cool down so you don't burn yourself or damage equipment. Here we have a lit Bunsen burner, a small beaker filled with a small amount of one molar hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, our loaded spot plate, and a wand, if you will. On the wand, you can see there's a small circle of metal. We want to make a little film of our reagent inside of that loop of metal. So first, let's dip this in HCl to clean it, just to clean any excess metal off of there. Put it in the flame and let the flame burn the uh, hydrochloric acid solution back off. There we go. Now these are color tests and the colors may not show up very well in the video. We're going to do our best for that. In person the colors are very vibrant. So let's dip it into one. I'll just do this one. And I'll put it sideways into the flame. Notice I don't have a very hot flame. Just put it in there sideways. And as it burns, there we have it. There we have a nice color change. The flame turned green if you, didn't, if you couldn't see it on the film. Let's do it one more time. It's maybe hard to see it on the video. There we go. And that's how you perform the flame test. Now, we've done this metal, this uh, compound. Let's dip it back in the HCl and flame it one more time to try to clean off any excess uh, reagent that might be on there. There we go. And now this wand, or this uh, loop, is ready to do the next experiment.